Hello guys and welcome to Survival Russia. Today I want to show you the Siberian Big Log Fire. So over the years I've shown you a few variants of uh, the Siberian Big Log Fire but I've never really shown it in uh, all its glory or full scale or as full scale as uh, one man can make it anyway. It's a, it's a campfire type of a fire that the uh, Ivink are using, it's a native tribe in Siberia. So it's also in Russian called uh, Ivinkiski Kastyor. As you might be able to see here, we have seven logs. The ground log here is a really good idea to have as big as possible and as fresh as possible. So this ground log here is like 60 kilograms or something, it's like 120-30 pounds. The ground log is from a pine that blew down during the summer, some of the summer storms we had. So it's relatively fresh and that will make it burn a lot lot slower than the top logs here. Here I have some birch bark, it's relatively fresh but it's also from a birch that were blown down over here. We are on a hilltop so as you know, this is the campsite. There's a lot of blowdown here. To make this fire, I've of course used my uh, saws. I've used the big one here, the Silky Katana Boy 500, of course, because uh, this is a preparation for the winter camp. But the smaller Silky Gone Boy 270, you can also do it. The saw can do a lot. I carry saws much more often than an axe or a small hatchet as I have here. I only need to cut these logs here and stack them on the top of each other and I know I'll have a fire that will burn for a long, long, long time. The saw also enables me to cut sections out without any knots. You can see here we have the knotty sections. They will of course go under the fire at some point. This makes it much easier to split. So this is one of the reasons that I consider a saw a very, very important tool and I think why the Old timers were not carrying saws but had to carry axes was that at that time back then the technology as we have today to make the razor, razor sharp saws uh, was simply not available. I'm sure that if uh, Horace Kephart could carry such a saw he would definitely do it. This little hatchet here you can see it's very slim profile. It's not the best wood splitter, but it will split wood, but it's a really good knife as well. But uh, some of my friends around the globe who have tried this fire out say it works fine for them with uh, different types of wood. And way, way far east in Siberia and so on, they don't have uh, even birch or anything like It's mostly just spruce and pine and in the many places only pine so uh, that's what they have some people say yeah pine sucks for firewood yeah it might not be the best firewood but if that's what you have then you simply have to <laughs> work with what you have right this one here is quite a lot longer because uh, this is for the superior uh, feather sticks So one of the funkier methods the natives are using for making their feather sticks is to take a piece of pine, stuck it, stick it in the ground here and hold it with the knee and do like this. And you get these fine feathers with some uh, extra material. But I'm not super happy about this method. Uh, it, it's, it's not difficult and uh, you just have to take care and uh, nothing will happen. But, but uh, now that you have a saw, <laughs> can be a good idea to take a piece of, uh, make a disc of wood and put between 
your knee and the knife that's a little bit nicer I think. But this method here produces really awesome feather sticks actually. You can try this little Swedish Hulterforce knife here. Then they make a lot lot of these. I use them to light the fire because uh, in, say in many places they don't even have birch. But I have birch so we will definitely use birch as well. But let's make a little burn test before we start the fire. Now that we are in native mode. I'm really not happy about the way they make their feather sticks but they work great. Actually this Japanese hatchet makes good feather sticks as well. Without being dangerous. And now before I forget it, because I almost always forget it and I get this question a lot about this hatchet. Is it full tang? Yes. It is. Indeed, just a second. Some of you suggested to wrap it with paracord. I think it would work quite fine actually. But this also works pretty fine. <laughs> it's a really nice rubber grip. Well, but let's see if we can light it up. Down here is just a big unholy mix of uh, birch bark, the feather sticks and some fat wood. Just get a lot of tinder there and fire it up. So it's not super important to start it in a way so all the logs are burning evenly. They will sooner or later catch on. When they start to burn out you'll of course just slide them forward. You can have a longer ground log so you can also slide them sideways if you want to or you can have a extra ground log laying ready but they will burn for three six hours at least the ground log. So one of the big advantages of this fire is that, in my opinion, that, that most of the heat are reflected towards camp. Here where I'm sitting there's almost no heat and in a regular fire where you stack wood up in a circle so to speak, the fire radiates all around the, the fireplace. It's of course nice if you want to sit in a circle and uh, play your guitar and uh, sing Kambaya and whatever, but uh, for a real campfire this is really really nice and efficient. This type of fire here, like, like this set, specific setup right now, will, will provide fire for a long long time, for many campouts actually. And now that we're all gathered here anyway, I would of course like to thank the, the new donors from both PayPal and Patreon. I must admit that uh, I have forgotten my note with the names, so uh, I can remember John and James from PayPal and uh, from Patreon. I actually only remember Ronald Kongstad, who's most likely Danish, and that's why I remember him. But uh, I really appreciate it because uh, with a little bit of luck, and I think we only need like $250 or something like that, then I will actually go and get this vehicle uh, by the end of the month. And I just hope it's still there by the end of the month because. It's in awesome condition. So thank you very much guys. You have been doing the channel a great, great favor, I'll say. And that means we can go somewhere. It also means that uh, I can get myself uh, potentially into some good trouble. <laughs> and if you want to help out on the last push, then uh, check the links in the description to uh, PayPal and Patreon. That'll be awesome. So next week I actually have a plan to head into bear ter territory, into the hunting cabin to check up on it because we are going there soon but that's gonna be like a two day trip and uh, because it's gonna be on foot it's a very very difficult area to reach <laughs> and uh, yeah I'll take you with me but the video will most likely only be up in the next weekend I think it's due like Wednesday or Thursday or something like this and that's a good hike both in and out that's for sure yeah I hope you like the video also the ones of you who are already familiar with the Siberian Big Log Fire but uh, please check in on the channel, uh, Saturdays and Sundays, there are new videos up there. YouTube, they only share newsfeed to 10% of uh, subscribers, so uh, it's 
doesn't mean there are no videos just because you don't get a news feed. Sub share, like and all that good stuff. Check the links in the description. And until next time, get out on train and get it done. And see you next time right here in Russia. Thank you guys.